Good evening, and welcome to the Shadows of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition Livestream Campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running our game as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Wilhelm Wolfsbane, the human swashbuckler rogue. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Denitis, playing Rudy Whitaker, the shifter eldritch knight. And Joel Gorman, playing Wrath, the Asimar warlock. Thank you for joining us once again. If you are just tuning in for the very first time, welcome. We are the Dungeon Dudes, and Kelly and I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday on our YouTube channel, where we cover everything D&D, including advice for players and guides for Dungeon Masters. You can check us out at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. And you can also join us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch. Check us out from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. And you can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check them out on your favorite podcasting platforms as well. And of course, we are in the midst of our Dungeons of Drakenheim Kickstarter. If you were a fan of the first season of our live stream campaign and have always wanted to run Drakenheim for your own gaming group, uh, you will be able to very soon because we are currently live on Kickstarter right now. Um, if you head to drakenheim.com, you can back our book. Kelly and I have put together with some very fun quips from Jill and Joe as well. <laughs> a, a full uh, a full adventure for characters level 1 to 13 set in the ruins of Drakenheim. This will allow you to recreate the events of our first campaign or take it in a wildly different direction because we have combined our favorite influences of dark fantasy, elder horror, and lots of cool other inspirations to bring you a uh, campaign in in our world um you'll have all the details of all the locations everything from the clock tower and the harpies within all the way to the depths of castle draken and certainly what lies within the crater itself um this we're so excited because this campaign on kickstarter has just blown away all our expectations uh we just passed uh, over seven thousand backers so far with seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in pledges um there are so many amazing things that we've been able to now do with this book we've been able to get lots of great art we're going to do miniatures we're going to do dice we're going to do a poster map of the city we're going to do a dungeon master screen and we we got a whole bunch of extras that we've added to the book from untold tales as well uh we got what we we got new character backgrounds in there we got more spells we got more magic items so e even a bit of crunchy stuff as as well right kelly oh yeah um i'm really excited that we were able to unlock the new magic items new spells a lot of the uh a lot of the stretch goals are very exciting for us because it just is adding new content that has never before been explored uh yeah. for all of all of you who are uh backing the book to be able to play around with and uh i'm really excited to hear how the different campaigns go who's gonna back what faction who's gonna rule drakenheim these are the great questions that uh are gonna be very different than what you are watching on our live stream yeah, we're getting into the never-before-seen territory as well with uh, our stretch goals. Our next stretch goal is to unlock the Iron Banshee, which is another malfeasant wizard banished from the Amethyst Academy, hiding in the ruins of Drakenheim. Once believed to be the wizard Ryan Greymere, it is rumored that the Iron Banshee was the very mage who first discovered the Academy methods for turning delirium into magic items. Now, the, what kind of monstrous creature has the Iron Banshee become? We will have to see when we unlock the uh, the stretch goal for this new adventure site uh, in, in the ruins of Drakenheim. So the, it's a, a never before uh, seen uh, character, brand new character, brand new location um, for characters to explore. We've added a lot of stuff from Untold Tales as well. And we've got a couple more surprises along the way too. So if you haven't checked it out already, head to drakenheim.com. Uh, you can back it on, uh, on Kickstarter. We're live uh, for just a little over two more weeks. So the campaign ends at midnight on the 30th of july so check that out uh other other bits of housekeeping news as well before we get back into our game tonight um we will be playing uh shadows of drakenheim once again uh next week 
uh, on the 20th of July. But after that, we will be taking a short hiatus uh, from our live stream campaign um, because we've got some uh, some of our cast members need to have a well-deserved break and uh, have some personal fun. Uh, so we will be taking some time off, but we will be uh, having a live stream closing party on the 30th when they, when they, when the Kickstarter ends. Um, we will be coming back in mid-August with our live stream uh, with a to be uh, so stay tuned for the exact date that we'll be coming back with in August but uh, we are looking forward to perhaps coming back and playing in the basement when we do <laughs> so uh, so for those of you that have been uh, wondering the uh, uh, the public health restrictions here in uh, our region are finally starting to lift uh, up and uh, we are now all in a state where all of us in the cast and our crew and our, our immediate family members feel that we are safe and prepared and that we can take the precautions necessary to come back in person again so after our height uh, so we'll be playing again remotely like this next week then we'll be taking a hiatus for uh, two or three weeks stay tuned for the exact details it actually depends on if we can get the gear because <laughs> we're hopefully going to upgrade some of our uh, studio equipment as well for that uh and uh, a big thank you to our patrons and our backers for the, for making that a possibility as well uh and so then we'll be playing once again in person with all of our awesome uh terrain miniatures and all that Aww. fun stuff coming so coming back again yeah we got we got some really cool cool stuff to you know got some new dwarven forge stuff got some yeah. new miniatures got some stuff i've been 3d printing so we're 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 really excited about that I'm so excited i'm just excited to i don't know have joe nudge me in the side when i forget to use lucky again <laughs> it's a lot easier than me messaging you because it's always too late yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so so uh, stay stay tuned for news uh, on that um because of a, a couple hanging questions we're not sure exactly which week in august we will be back so stay tuned uh to our social media feeds uh for the exact announcement on the date that we'll be returning for that but that will be in mid-august after uh, at least a two or three week hiatus so um with that um i think we can return to the shadows of drakenheim yeah all right uh, yeah Woo! drakenheim is no more for 15 years, we foolishly believed the madness and mayhem of that crumbling city was confined to the ruins. We were wrong. Insidious horrors have crept out of the shadow of Drakenheim into a world unprepared for such nightmares. Tales of strange magic, swirling haze, and unspeakable terrors echo through the villages and towns surrounding that accursed place. Now, the Dusk Wardens, a new band of heroes, are tasked with driving out the seeping tendrils of the spreading darkness before it takes root. Welcome back to the Shadows of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, they had embarked to a dinner party at Kesselholm Keep with the Countess Constance von Kleinkessel and a rather strangely behaving Lieutenant Commander Elias Drexel. At the Countess's invitation, our heroes opted to spend the night in this foreboding castle, uh, whereupon after sneaking out of their rooms in the midst of the night, they got into a lot of trouble and ended up uh, fire yeeting the castellan out a window, <laughs> yeeting the chamberlain out a window. Classic defenestration uh, right here. <laughs> and so now our heroes are in, uh, it, is, uh, it is now the middle of the night the heavy rain falls outside as thunder cracks through the air and with every flash of lightning the finery of um the keep itself flashes between being it's pristine and uh, it's, it's pristine and elegant state and in the flashes of lightning you can see it as a dilapidated and corrupted uh crumbling castle um with tattered carpets and tapestries stains of blood along the walls deep rents gashed into the portraits and the paintings but then as the 
lightning fades away you see once more the fine and warmth of the castle you stand now in the uh, in the lounge of the sir of the upper tower so it is a circular room of, of one of these, these these towers the stairs go up to the chamberlain's chambers there's a great hearth fireplace roaring with flame um and a large round mahogany table with um several statues and paintings and tapestries hung about fine silverware and candelabras that are flickering in the midnight uh in the night as the wind blows through the windows of the castle and makes the light dance and flicker about um, as the, as you look down into the night, and with a flash of lightning, you see the body of the cast uh, of, of the uh, chamberlain who you ejected uh, off the wall, uh, fluttering down the stream below and uh, being dashed across the rocks. What will you do? Well, if uh, they didn't know that we were here before, they're probably going to know soon. They know that we're here. They offered us to stay the night. <laughs> Tommy, Brad, you're not we wrong. were invited. And then I start to mend the door. I'm going to try to cast mending on the door to try to repair the door that uh, to, to try to, to like hide our tracks. Uh, uh, yeah. the, the, the window that you shattered. Um, uh, it's a good start. I, yep. Yeah, because the pieces of the window are gone. <laughs> And like with mending you you mending won't create matter that is not there right so the the window the p shards of glass are are scattered all about wrath i meant that they know that we're out and about and murdering people is is more where i was going with that look i just i i i'm a, i'm a little frustrated uh i thought we had the drop on them and i can't believe they caught on to us this this the castellan um is is I think he's dead, and well, the Chamberlain, the right. Chamberlain. Um, um, I don't know what to do now. We they they must they must be aware that we are up to no good. I'm like pressed against the wall, kind of peering around the corner down this hallway, listening to see if anybody's coming. Um, but yeah, I turn to Wrath, and I'm like. Well, the good news is that we have now discovered that even the housemaids and the guards are problematic, and it seems that this is a castle of all monsters. I thought we were hunting a singular vampire. It was probably foolish of me to assume that they did not have uh, a legion of monstrosities inhabiting this once beautiful castle. But now, in the flashes of lightning, seems like it hasn't been taken care of at all. Mm. I mean, definitely words probably out that we're probably not who we say we are, or we're not here for the, the reasons maybe they intended, but I think w we need to sort out how we're going to get this Countess, and how to get Last Drexel out of her command. I think facing off against the Countess this evening would be ill-advised, as I don't think we have the drop on her anymore. And, I mean, rule number three, never underestimate your foe. Rule number one, always have a plan of attack. Rule number four, know your strengths and your enemy's weaknesses. Really, if we're thinking about it, we don't know enough about the Countess yet to know all of her weaknesses. We need to find where she goes to sleep. And I mean like the crypt that she resides in. We need to save Elias and I think we need to get out of here. Hmm. Do you so think Elias can... is still in the in the castle or do you think he's been moved somewhere else? I would I would assume he's still in the castle and um I mean all castles have a prison or a jail of some sort, usually, even a small one, and I assume this castle is no different. Um, perhaps he's being kept there? I want to search the Chamberlain's room. Um, I don't know if we had a chance to do it 
Yeah, they yeah, sort of you, got a good look, but I don't know if we... You did... You were able to search through the Chamberlain's room. Uh, you found several of his documents and maps in the area, um, which mm -hmm. included... Um, there are two of the documents that you found searching through his uh, his documents were first a letter uh, from uh, the Masons Guild uh, asking about what happened to some stone masons that were sent to work on renovations of the castle. Um, and the second documents that you found were several maps of the region uh, that noted quite specifically the location of a House von Draken crypt. Hmm. That seems like a great starting place. I mean, um, definitely an option for vampires and resting if, if we know anything about that. Now, the, 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 the only question is, do you think they head to the crypt to rest, or do you think they have another location in the castle that they rest? Hmm. But perhaps it is worth checking out this crypt. This the the place that you are in. This castle is a hostile environment. You can all roll a d six. Two, five, four. Okay. You hear screeching in the wind and the clamoring of claws. As you look up towards the spire of the central keep, you see the leering gargoyles overhead. Did you see them move for a moment? No. No, they couldn't have. I don't think we have much time before we are rediscovered here. Um, I have a plan. Okay. I think... And I'm going to walk over to the fireplace. And I'm going to check to see if there is any secret entrances at this fireplace. Give me an investigation check. Twenty-four. Um, the as you come towards the fireplace, there is a, a, a wrought iron girder in front of the fire, in front of the the, the logs of fire, um, and there is the the pile of wood that is held in in kind of the the wrought iron kind of holder, um, burning away, but. You can see that the depth of the um, actual fireplace is quite deep, and the chimney is quite wide. And as you look up, you you see that the um, this is a stacked chimney, so the chimney comes up from from the levels below and above, and you can see that in the chimney itself, it, it is actually quite wide. And there are a set of metal bars of a ladder that lead um, both up and down, incidentally. I um, I fling open the fireplace and start stomping out the fire. And I turn to my two friends and I say, rule number 64, when no path presents itself, forge a new path. And um, I, I'm going to kind of beckon them over to the fireplace. Oh, wow, you're Wilhelm. That's a fantastic spot in that. I mean, I would have had no idea that that was there. How would you figure in, in a place like this? Well, um, most castles have old passages, and you just need to have an idea on where to look, I suppose. I've never quite been in a castle like this before, so I wouldn't even know where to look. Good job. That's, yeah, I had no idea that this existed. Do we go up or down? How do we... Well, if we want to get to the to the jails, those would most likely be down. If we want to get to the Countess, that would most likely be up. Um, although up might just lead back to the Chamberlain's room. That's true. We are in the tower. I would say maybe down. Uh, I don't know if we're in any spot to fight the Countess, Countess right now. The way I see it is uh, they're probably mustering their strength to come convene at this point right now. They might think that we can't, wouldn't find this entrance or might not know about it. So they might think that we are sitting ducks trapped in this room. So if we head down while they are heading up, we might be able to avoid conflict. 
I've never been a sitting duck before. So ducks normally are the ones that have a bit of trouble around me. Yes, and we do not want to be <laughs> ducks in this case. No, we don't. All right. I say we um, just <laughs> down. <laughs> I'm. <laughs> Thanks, Wrath. Uh, as I as I, I'm gonna usher you towards the the, the ladder. I'm, I'm gonna. I want to don the disguise of the Chamberlain, and I'm gonna go first, and I'm gonna. Um, I want to sort of motion to Rudy, start up the, start up the fire again, cover our tracks. I got it. And I press to digitate uh, the fire. As we climb down the ladder. The, the, it is a narrow chute, but one large enough to accommodate your, uh, accommodate you individually. As you, you climb down to the lower level, um, you, stop past um, a much narrower fireplace um and as you as you sort of climb down you can actually see that this um you come to sort of a, a landing point on a narrow fireplace where there is a metal grate that is a, f- a back to the, the the fireplace as if it's a door that is would only be obvious from this side that someone on the other side and possibly might not even actually open from the other side and you can look out through the grate and you can actually see a dingy uh, servant's room in the bottom of the of the tower. There's a, a set of tables uh, that uh, with some rather rancid looking meat placed upon them. Um, and the uh, there is a doorway that leads out to the courtyard. Um, so the the room that you would be in uh, would be this room here. So uh, my map actually is a little inaccurate because this is where the fireplace would be here. So you can actually see that from from here, there's a, a set of stairs going down in this chamber. There's the pair of tables. There's there's several shelves and racks, and then there's the set of doors that would actually lead you out onto the battlements of the of the courtyard from here. I was gonna say this is outside, right here, correct? Correct. Yes, that would be out on onto the battlements of the of the courtyard area. But the the chute that you are in actually continues down. I, I pause for a second and I, I kind of like shh the the other two and I just want to listen to see if I hear any 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 anybody. Hmm. As you listen, you hear the creaking of the door uh, leading into this room. It hangs slightly ajar and flaps slightly in the wind, uh, as if whoever was in this room has very quickly made their way out of it. Hmm. I don't hear anything. Should we continue? Or should, should, is going down further? I say we continue down. I am to keep going down. Bruce is like maybe a step behind me. Okay. He's in between me and Mahal. You continue further down and the shoot ends um, in a small circular chamber with um essentially what what you can see is there is uh, as you come down to the the very bottom is there is a circular stone block push that that you could push out uh at the very base of the of the tower here um that what is on the other side is 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 not clear but it it looks like there's a there's like a handle on it that you could rotate it and pull it out or push it in um and it, it's about maybe 18 about two feet wide creates a small opening uh um embossed at the very bottom of the uh, at uh, on the wall uh at the bottom of the the shoot here without skipping a beat i walk up and start to open it okay it rumbles open hmm. as you begin to turn it. Can I, I yeah. help him to do it more smoothly? Sure. The two of you, uh, Rudy, you can make a stealth check helped by Wilhelm. Fourteen. Okay. 
Um, sorry, did I say stealth? I meant strength. Oh, okay then. That's different. <laughs> uh, 17. Okay. You, you lift it as you turn it so that it doesn't grind against the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you want to push it outward or pull it in? Uh, pull it inward. Okay. You pull, uh, you, you pull it inward and I will just grab our group here. Just in case there's something in front of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. A nauseating stench hits your nostrils as you open this up. It is like the smell of a battlefield the day after the slaughter. Like the smell of starting to of freshly decaying meat, mud, and refuse of the bowels, vomit that has just coalesced into a stink that as you pull this this away um you are in the bottom of a the 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 piece opens up and you see the base of a spiral staircase um that is slick with something it's some sort of bodily fluid but is it bile is it blood it's not entirely certain there's a flicker of torchlight in the hall ahead of you and a low growling noise rattling through the chambers ahead a hissing a gurgling a burbling and a burping the sounds of rattling against metal creatures screeching echoing down the halls the chamber that you are in is quite small, uh, uh, is, is clearly the base of the tower itself. Um, and it is, there we are. Um, and so you would be entering from, from here and you can see that there is a short hallway ahead of you. Um, that is that is illuminated um, and as you make out the rest of the hall it seems that there is a row of prison cells that are all along here uh, and another portcullis door here and there as you look out there is a lashing limb just a flash of a limb reaches out from one of the bars it has no skin. Hmm. I think before one of us goes down to see what what that is, maybe we should send maybe Bruce to prowl it out. All we really need to do down here is check to see if Elias is in any of these cells. If he is, then we have our target. If he's not, then we don't need to be here. So I do think that either Bruce or Houdini, whoever is more willing. I'm going to go. I start to walk down the hallway as the Chamberlain. And I'm going to just confidently start to begin the journey down the hallway. Or keeping my ignore us, sure. Yeah. <laughs> distance from uh from the the cell doors as as best i can okay as you proceed down the halls you catch a glimmer in the flickering firelight of the torches of octarine light 
balefully shining out from some of the cells. As you progress forward, you can see that the cells themselves are iron-bound doors with a, just that small slat of bars to look into the cell. And there's a bit of octarine light just shining out from each of them. And it looks like the first door, there was a slat that could slide across the bars, and the arm that burst out had actually knocked that slat away. So the other doors are these I, again, iron-bound doors with a barred slat that closes uh, in, in, in front of them. Um, and so the, the cell that is down here is the one that the arm reached out of. Uh, it's it's the, this one uh, down here at the end here. Um, and you can see that emanating from within is a slight octarine glow. I'm going to walk down the hallway and attempt to peek in to the uh, to the cell door. As you walk down the hall, there is a clangering as something pounds on the doors behind each metal metal cell. The doors shudder and shake and you can actually hear the sound of the wrenching metal of the hinges as something behind one of the doors just pound and there's this me metallic clattering and this screeching <laughs> and gurgling coming from behind the cell doors. Um, the the pounding on the metal as you walk down towards the the singular open uh slat it'll hold it'll hold it'll hold i'm just repeating in my head as i as i continue to walk very confidently i am the chamberlain this is my house maybe ask if they know elias drexel <laughs> <laughs> and i turn around and i and in your mind, I will ask. I will ask. Okay. You approach <laughs> the, the cell door. There's an octarine light inside. You can see, just as you look through the window, narrowly, there is a brazier hanging from the ceiling. Within the brazier instead of coal are a few chunks of burning delirium and the smoke coming off of them is familiar for its octarine glow it's like a small area of the haze in the cell can i see the creature that's in here you i try have to... to get closer to the slat to see <laughs> Piece of cake. <laughs> I take a step forward and I inch closer. And, and a close massive eyeball fills the entire window. It's this huge <laughs> singular eye with deep purple irises and this wide, then this thin, tall pupil in the middle. And, and it just pops up and looks at you. The eye is like the size of your head and it blinks for a moment and there's a howling noise. And all of a sudden this octarine glow begins to in, in, in come from, from the eye. Um, roll a, a dexterity <laughs> saving throw. Eleven. Uh, you narrowly dodge the octarine <laughs> beam that shoots out of the bars from from the eye and collides with the door on the other side. Um, I'm going to scamper, and I mean scamper, uh, <laughs> to the to the wall that's like that the that the creature that the door um, uh, that the creature came from. I'm going to go to that wall so it gets like almost no vision against me, and I'm going to stand up. And I look down the hallway back at, <laughs> at Rudy and Wilhelm. 
a claw comes out and like grasping through the bars it's this uh, skinless hand the flesh is purple and knobbly and the claws reach through trying to like like you know how like a cat tries to reach under a door but imagine that but it's a disgusting humanoid hand check the other rooms i'm gonna i'm gonna give it give it a wide berth and um Looking at the door, is there anything that sort of indicates some kind of uh, like numbering system, some kind of organizational code, or is it just a bunch of? There are heavy computers? padlocks on the fronts of each of the doors. Uh, looking on the ground, is there any signs that the like that a door might have been recently opened, like it might have some fresh? Uh, sure. Give me an investigation check. Uh, 11. These doors are frequently opened. There are deep rents in the ground and there are spatters of blood, all of, of dried blood. Like in, in fact, looking down the floor, the stone floor is that's you you realize when you look down that the color of the stone floor has been stained by layers and layers of vile blood spilled here i uh in rudy and wilhelm's mind i convey that there is a the they are using delirium to torture and change the prisoners in these cells be careful but we must search quickly he may be here but he may not be it is best we move fast and i'm gonna go to like the fur like the furthest one and try to attempt to check it i i'm gonna also come and help and like i'm gonna go to the the opposite side that wrath is on and i'm actually gonna use my rapier to try to like push open the slot so that I not right up to it. Okay, which which one would you like to go to? I'm doing, uh, I'm going to do this one. Okay, and Rudy, what would you like to do? I want to keep watch. I'm assuming that these stairs are the only way down. Uh, the stairs go up. Yeah, so if somebody um, was going to come down, they'd come down the stairs. There, there is a, another, there is a door here. Mm. Um, that uh, starts before the row of cells, uh, and it is made of iron-bound wood. It is not like a cell door like the others are. Okay. So, Wilhelm, you want to check this this cell here? Yeah. Okay. You slide open the... Um, you slide open the uh, the cell door... And you see in this cell, there is a truly wretched figure. It is covered in boils and there are bits of delirium embedded into its flesh. It is chained against the wall. Um, one of its limbs has become a mangled tentacle um, and the rest of its body is covered in, in bruises and horrifically de discolored with octarine stains. Unmistakably, though, all across its body, it is chained to the wall, and all across its body are bite marks. Much like those that were on the body of the of the burgomaster leah the vampires are feeding on delirium blood hmm. that's i are they trying to get some sort of powers from that or i'm just gonna quietly close the thing on that door and i kind of turn to you rudy horrified and just kind of shrug I don't Strange. know. Strange. There's, we found, we found our delirium, but how it's being used, I've never seen anything like this. 
This is most unsettling. If they are drinking the delirium through those infected, it could create all sorts of different uh, side effects. It might be why it's so difficult to understand these monsters, why they don't show themselves as true delirium creatures. Well, and the filtering process. Does that give them more uh, abilities compared to regular vampires? Like, are they able to go out in the sun, etc.? Like, what is that? Well, that's a problem we're <laughs> going to have to figure out, isn't it? I didn't know that. Uh... Good thinking, Rudy, and I'm terrified now. Just to be aware of, you know, your enemies and such. You have a rule about that or something, something, something. Uh, yep. Yep. I do. I have a few. Um. <laughs> the, the exposure down here could be bad for us. It has been a while since I have taken any Aqua Expergo. We should continue to search the cells and try to figure out if the El Elias Drexel is down here and move on. Quickly as possible, then. All right. <gasps> I'll still keep an eye out. All of you can roll a d6. Ooh. Three. Four. Three. Okay. You slide open the cells and see a similar sight behind each slat. A mutated creature, a wretched drag, chained up in various states of mutation with a brazier of delirium, uh, giving off a haze, sustaining it, and all covered in pockmarks of the bites of vampires. Each and every cell? Each and every cell. Should we sabotage these feeding grounds? We could remove the delirium. We could kill the dregs kill the infected it's a good plan will it know. draw too much attention to us right now i don't know if we have time before they get down here and hear what we're doing i know uh, what we're after killing them would stop they continue to rattle and rage within their cells. Some of them have slightly broken off their chain, which allows them to pound at the doors. Um, and you can, like, there's visible, like, these are heavy iron doors, but some of them are clearly strong enough to at least dent the doors. I mean, we can make it harder for the vampires to get in here. Uh... I can arcane lock this door and wrath if you have a way to block the staircase with your magic I don't know we could well we should check this this door Rudy that you um, have been watching what is beyond it I take a peek through <laughs> that door uh, it doesn't have a slat oh. window on it it's just a closed door is it um, I want to try to open it and see if it's locked uh, it does open. It reveals a short staircase. Um, that, uh, that heads straight down. Um, and as the staircase descends, it ends in, uh, a cistern. This must be directly underneath the water well above. And... Uh, in the cistern chamber, um, there is a collection of water from from the well. There's the the chain and the bucket hanging down in 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 here. But then, as you look down the stairs, you can see that there is a uh, another portcullis, uh, more like a grate actually, because it doesn't have a door at all. Like there, like it is just bars across, like a like a steel bar grate that is just placed here there's no hinges there's no lock just a straight up grate um and looking it over it looks like this might be a recent construction 
of some kind. Uh, it's it's clear that the stonework around this has been. Uh, there's a difference in the brickwork that the the brickwork surrounding it is visibly newer. Some newer pathways in comparison to the rest of the brickwork. Indeed. Might be a different passage leading here mm. for who knows. Now, beyond looking looking down, there is a staircase that descends sharply, um, and at the and there is a small um, there. There's almost a reddish scarlet glow at uh, of perhaps flickering candles at the base of the stairs now here's a curious question for all of you why would a group of vampires inhabiting a castle build a new area in the basement the answer could be a place to rest mm, i agree i think i mean this is obviously their uh their uh snacks uh, and if they want them at night when they're feeling a little bit munchy, you know, don't want to have to go far to find the kitchen. So it makes sense. These must be the missing stonemasons. Now, again, it is the middle of the night, which does give us another benefit here. Uh, if they're upstairs looking for us, they're probably not resting. If we are heading to their resting place, at least we can pinpoint it. Confirm that. And the more we know, the better chance we have. So I say we go investigate. Agreed. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna head down. I go behind you. Can I open this this grate? It's actually not immediately apparent how it might open. Um, lo lo looking it over, give me an investigation check. I touch your shoulder, Wilhelm, and I want to cast Guidance. That gives me an extra d4, yeah? You can figure this out. I believe in you. Thank you for the Guidance, because otherwise uh, that could have gone really bad. Uh, I get a 13. Looking through this, you realize that if the creature that you fought in the Burgermaster's Manor could assume the form of mist, why would they need this to even open? Quick, Wrath, I need you to assume the form of mist. Uh, I, I don't know. Okay, wait. Can you teleport Bruce? I snap my fingers and Bruce disappears. And then I'm going to snap my fingers again and have him appear on the other side of the grate. Okay. What bigger the grate slots? The the slats in, in the grate, imagine like a sewer grate. So I would say that they're about four inches apart from each of the bars, the bars themselves being about two inches wide. Okay. Could Houdini fit? <laughs> uh, Houdini could definitely squeeze through. I push him through the grate. <laughs> like... His okay. feathers get like caught a little bit and then yeah. <laughs> pops out the other side. Don't even need to disappear him and make him go through. He's fine. Uh, I. <laughs> so Bruce is in there and Houdini? Yeah. Yep. Yep, they're on the other side. What are you going to do? Proceed with caution. I guess while both of you are inside of your familiars, I'm going to keep watch out here. You know what? Okay. I keep Houdini in this room to keep an eye. Um, but I'm not going to go in yet. I'm going to see what happens with Bruce. Yeah, okay. I'm going to send Bruce in. He's going to be super stealth. Okay. Sneak, sneak, sneak. Your familiars descend through their sight. You see a great chamber, almost like a chapel or temple of stone, bone, and blood. The room here is 20 feet high and supported by massive pillars of stone. The entire room is decorated 
is decorated with motifs of skulls, bat-like creatures, and mortared stone that is filled with bone. There are piles of skulls, broken bodies, and desiccated corpses strewn about. A great skull-lined bath filled with blood. Surrounding the chamber in several alcoves are, ro are niches filled with great coffins. The coffins are wrapped up in chains and a shard of delirium is embedded into the lock upon each. Each coffin has several holes in the top of it and there is fresh blood poured dripping inside each as something scratches and breathes heavily within each one. Although notably there is one, uh, one of the coffins uh, does not have such accoutrements upon it. Um, at the head of the pool, uh, at the far lower end of the pool of blood is an altar of skulls, candles, and strange tomes shards of delirium placed upon it and at the top end of the chamber is a great statue of a bloated goat-like demon with a face of a skull behind it is a massive hole in the floor which descends into darkness hmm. Well, that sounds horrible. These chains, these... Are these creatures prisoners? Are they choosing to sleep in this manner? I'm so... Theory, the one that is opened, mm -hmm. it was the Countess's, perhaps. And these are maybe her family? The, the, the idea that this place is sectioned off from the rest and being a new build tells me that there's a this is a recent addition. They uh, could have been recently dug up and added so that they could be brought closer to the Countess. You can all roll the d6. Two. Six. One. Okay. A six and a one? Yep. Okay. <laughs> there is a shuddering from one of the coffins as the delirium shard within it goes dark and crumbles into ash. As it does so, the the chain and the padlock releases and the lid of the coffin flies off just clattering across the ground a pale white arm claps on either side of the coffin and an emaciated but uh, an emaciated creature rippling with ripcord muscles reaches and stands up. It is garbed in cloth robes. It is bald with long pointed ears and sharp fangs and milk white eyes that glow the end. There is pulsing octarine through its veins. It hisses. As it stands up, a voice reverberates through the air, and it says, My servant, there are unwanted guests nearby. See to them. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> they know we're here. I think it's time to leave. Um, Bruce disappears. And with that, <laughs> there is a crash as the door behind you slams. The door at the top of the stairs that you came down slams shut, and a heavy cover closes over the top of the well. Sorry, so it's this this door here closes? Yeah, yeah. So so you you would all be now um You're in the hall, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you you all would have been uh I'm on the wrong layer. So this has left you all trapped in this room. Wait, were we able to get into this room without being missed, or are we all just in the stairwell? Yeah, yeah, because this is this is where the this part is where the portcullis is. Ah, uh, this portcullis yeah. was openable. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Understood. Um, good. Well, so now we're trapped in a tiny little room. The good news is, uh, maybe not all vampires can turn into mist. I mean, I can turn into mist. <laughs> you guys can roll a stealth check for your familiars. I will do no such thing. <laughs> Seven. Um, 20. Okay. The creature catches sight of, um, of your uh, owl and it begins clamoring along um, walking almost on all fours with disjointed limbs as it as it scuttles forward uh, towards uh, Houdini where uh, is this room? 20 feet tall <laughs> what He's are you just... going to do? Uh, Houdini's going to fly back to me okay uh I will have you all roll for initiative. Oh, man. Oh, man. What we got? 27. Six, 27. 16. 16 for Rudy. 18. 18 for Wrath. Wow, everyone rolled high tonight. All right. Uh, Wilhelm, um, you can hear the howling of this creature. What are you going to do? Uh, can I, like, do I know where it is at all? Uh, you know that it is in the other room, um, but but not visible currently. But to it's me. not visible currently to you. No. Uh, then I am going to uh, move up so that I am kind of next to the grate and kind of push myself up against the wall and peek around the corner with my crossbow ready, and I am going to ready in action to fire my crossbow if a vampire monster is visible. Okay. Sounds good. The vampire monster. Um, it, um, it clamors forward, um, scuttling across the rooftop, uh, across the ceiling and, uh, and up and across, uh, dashing uh, and leaping o over uh, to this. Uh, yeah, I think we go. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. there we go. On the ceiling. Yeah, it kind of <laughs> climbs up the pillar, scuttles across the ceiling, then drops down o uh, o over here. Um, and it uh, that's its full full turn. I am concerned. Vampires, they'll get you. Wrath, it's your turn. Can I can I see it now that it's moved? Um, you know that it's at the base of the stairs now. You can hear it, but you from where you are, you do not have line of sight. Um, and and I I want to do a quick survey. So there's a well. Yes. And it's full of still water. Is it? Yeah. So basically, the room the room that you are in uh, kind of has a jug like shape. 
Okay. And then there's a circular opening in the top that goes 20 feet up to the well. And then there would be the top of the well up there. And then the, there's the pool of water here that serves the well. And it's covered now. Like something. Yes, it is, it is closed now. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm going to jump in the water. Okay, you jump in the water. And I'm going to hide in the water and uh, and just go under and just kind of like submerge myself. <laughs> and I just... Like, <laughs> Where's Wrath going? Okay. Uh, Rudy, what are you going to do? Uh... And Bruce is still hiding. Bruce is like trying to keep away from crawly monster... Well, Houdini's gonna right. run away. Wait, is Houdini based with this monster? Uh, no. Given the positioning, I'll say no. Run away! <laughs> so he's gonna fly through the grate and come over okay. to me. Um, I'm gonna move down a little bit, and you said we can't see it through if we move. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yep. Uh, I am going to ready in action, so that way when I see it, I fire bolt its face off. Okay. Um, top of the round, uh, we actually go back to Wilhelm. Do you want to continue readying your action, or do you want to do something else? I am also, yeah, I'm going to ready the action to shoot. Yeah. Okay. I jumped in um, there. <laughs> okay. Cool. I thought the about creature. getting in the pool with with Raph. <laughs> I see him submerge, and I'm like, oh, hiding spot. But then blah, I'm like, blah, blah, blah. no, no, no. There's a couple bubbles, and then there's nothing. I can't breathe okay. underwater. Can I? The creature begins. It climbs up the ceiling of the staircase. Again, with these disjointed limbs, clambers up, and it dives towards the grate. Wilhelm, you can fire your ready to action. All right. Uh, 25 to hit. It's a hit. Um, I don't... Uh, there's no sneak attack on that. No, no. no. Ah, nuts. All right, that's going to be uh, nine damage. Okay. As it leaps forward, it dissolves into a mass of sticky vile blood basically like it I, ejects all of the insides of its do, do you had a ready to action as well rudy yeah i was gonna say do i get okay. a shot before it does yeah, this you do yep. fire yep. bolt 17 to hit uh that's right on its ac it takes 13 fire damage okay nice <gasps> okay as it as you shoot at it it basically turn like it vomits out all of its organs that amorphously flow through the grate and it its skin just sloughs apart its bones come forward all of you need to make a constitution saving throw because you're all in the area yeah and, and do i avoid it because i'm underwater i will give you advantage on your saving throw yeah uh 18. I'm going to use my final luck point. <laughs> okay. 21. 18. You all succeed. However, you all do. Uh, you, uh, um, you all do still take um, 10 points of necrotic damage, uh, but fortunately you can still regain hit points. <laughs> uh, and as it as it moves through, its form reconstitutes on the other side. <laughs> Um, I think it's going to reconstitute there. Yeah. Good, oh, good, 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 good. Okay. Um, it reconstitutes. There's a shuddering. And you hear the sound of padlocks opening and heavy iron doors flying open. And then the door at the top of the stairs flies back open again. 
I love it. Uh, we seem to have found ourselves in another <laughs> trap, friends. Uh, Rudy, it's your turn. Or Wrath, it's your turn, sorry. Okay, so does it know I'm underwater? Uh, it, it can see you from where it is, yeah. <laughs> it sees my mohawk like, yeah. sticking out of the sticking water. Sticking out of the water like a shark. <laughs> it's like a shark fin. Yeah. Um, oh, then, uh... It was a good hiding spot, Wrath. It was a good hiding spot. <laughs> it, it, it didn't do anything. Um, I was going to try to do some cool action thing where I was going to pop out of the water and like water was going to splash everywhere and I was going to shoot him. And I'm still going to do it, but it's just going to be terrible now. Um, <laughs> it's still cool. It still looks cool. So I, I emerged from the water. He obviously has he could see me and um and i i i want to try to like like splash him with my hair and um try to get in his face to distract him and then i'm going to try to eldritch blast him okay um i get a oh that's probably not enough i get a 16. that is a miss oh too busy doing hair flips yeah yeah, uh, the disadvantage is just brutal. And then um, I'm going to try to hit him again. Oh, mm -hmm. baby. Um, that time a 17. It's a hit. Uh, it's all I needed. I whip my hair back and forth. <laughs> so I'm going to do <laughs> 10 uh, force damage, and I'm going to just blast him back into the, into the grate. Okay, cool. And... Um, and then There's I'm going to go to the, the other. The blast sends him hurtling backwards, and you scramble out of the well. <laughs> he didn't seem to care. And I'm going to try to get Bruce. Can Bruce fit through the the hole? Uh, Bruce. Cats, yeah, cat, cats, cats are cats, liquid. Yeah, cats are liquid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> he just, he, he, he wonders why I made him disappear in the first place. And he just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy. Okay. Rudy, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, and this thing is blocking the hallway now? The the grate is blocking the hallway. I mean, you, you might be able to break it down. This one? No. Uh, th this grate is not there. That's an error in the map. Okay. Uh, this the this is the real grate. Um, I want to try to move and get past... Yeah. With the narrowness of the hallway and this creature getting past him is going to be pretty difficult, uh, but not impossible. You can certainly try. If you want, to, if you want to try to muscle past him, uh, I would need a shove action though. And is that considered an attack? Yeah. Okay. Um. Basically, you would be shoving him prone and bulldozing him past him. You know what? I am going to. I wanna. I do wanna shove him. Well, and that is that. That door's open, correct? At the top now. Uh, yes, it is open. The the, the door at the top of the stairs is open. Okay, I still actually. I, I do wanna shove him. Okay. Yeah. All right. Give me an opposed strength check. Can I, uh, strength or athletics? Uh, yeah, athletics. Yeah. 13. Um, I also get a 13, so we will roll off again. 18. I get a 15. So yes, you push him back. All right. Um, and then I want to push him back ag again. Sure, go for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 13. I got a, a 23. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Um, so that's two, two attacks. Mm -hmm. You could make a third as a bonus action because that would be considered attacking. Um, yeah, I want to turn one more time. I just want to get him out of this room. It, it would be an attack. It would not be another push. Like the, oh, the bonus okay. action attack can't be turned into a shot. Sorry, then I will uh, 
Hit him with an axe. Okay. Yep. Uh, 19 to hit. Uh, it is a hit. Your axe cut. Co- you push him back and axe him in the face. Six damage. Nice. Okay. So you're kind of like shoving him up the stair- stairs, and then as he it girds himself, you slap him in the face with the, with the axe. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, guess who's going to come join the party? Everyone. Everybody get in here. Ansel uh, and... <laughs> party up in here. Uh, yeah, so uh, a bunch of uh, these horrible monsters that are in the cells that are now open rush out uh, uh, from uh, uh, freed from their suddenly freed from their chains uh, and begin uh, scurrying forward uh, in in hungry, hungry uh, fury, um, filling the hall behind this creature. Uh, that actually brings us back to the top of the round with Wilhelm. Wilhelm runs and leaps up onto the edge of this pool of water and readies his crossbow and yells, on your left, to Rudy, uh, indicating that I'm going to shoot bolts past her left side so she should dodge to the right. Okay. Which I don't have time to explain, but I hope she gets it. Um, We've worked together a lot. We'll know in a minute if it works. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And so then I'm going to fire my, my hand crossbow. All right, you take the shot. 23 to hit. Oof, and that this, is a good shot. This time I will use my sneak attack, trying to hit that vampire right in the face. Heart, heart, go for the heart. Twenty-two damage. Um, Oof. Yeah, that leaves it bloodied. And then I. Um, immediately fire a second shot. Ah, uh, getting 16. It's a miss. Ah. And uh, I hold position where I am. Alrighty. The horrific creature uh, takes its turn. Oh, sweet. Its ability recharges. Oh, cool. good. <laughs> uh, it collapses into a mass of sticky blood and disgorges itself forward. Wilhelm and Rudy, you can both make uh, constitution saving throws. Oh. 12. No. Eight. Uh, you both take 20 points of necrotic damage, uh, and you cannot regain hit points for one minute. Yeah. <laughs> Not from anything, I guess. <laughs> Um, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and it's going to end its turn over here. No! Uh, and it regenerates. It regains 10 hit points. Just stop. He's already <laughs> dead. <laughs> <laughs> he is already dead, actually. I think he's the undead. Yep. Uh, he's uh, truly, truly living up to his name. Why is it that whenever Wilhelm thinks he has a good position, it turns into such a bad position? <laughs> Positioning is key, you know. Okay. Wrath! Uh, help! With that, uh, we go to Wrath. Okay. I've been in this water. I've been in this well before, okay? I know my way around it. How deep is it? Uh, the well uh, from here goes another 10 feet down. And that's it. Like, that's... Yeah. So it's not an easy escape route. I mean that it 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 ends. It's a cistern, so like water collects here. Uh, it it's not like a drain. Like it, it, this, the way this well is built is me- meant to collect water, not grab water from a, a source. Okay. Um. Then plan <laughs> plan swim away is out of the question. So, um, Bruce is going to. Just j- j- jump off Wilhelm's head and jump in this creature's face, and um, I'm going to position myself off to the side because I'm going to try to knock it back towards Rudy, um, and I get like a 24 to hit. Okay, it hits um, for uh, seven damage, okay. and so I'm going to knock it back towards uh, Rudy. Okay. Uh- it can't really can't, be moved from I? its current okay, position. Okay. Yeah. Then I'm just pounding it into the wall. Um, yeah. 
and I take another shot and I crit. That's what nice. we needed. <laughs> so that's gonna be max damage plus D10. Uh, 21 damage. Ugh. It is extraordinary. Like, so I'm just bits blasting of body into it. Yeah, bits of its body are flying off, but it, it doesn't care. And I'm, I'm, I'm yelling, get away from him. You can feed on me if you're hungry. And I might regret that. <laughs> okay. Uh, with that, that's everything for Wrath. So, Rudy, we're over to you. All right. Um, I actually, looking at this door, how does it open? Uh, it is just a, a standard swing and door. Okay. Um, I want to come up to this door and cast Arcane Lock <laughs> on this door. Okay. So you close the door and cast Arcane Lock on it. Yep. That's a, we don't have to worry about the other uh, delirium creatures. Just worry about that vampire. Thanks, Rudy. Nice move. Nice move. <laughs> Clutch play, clutch play. You know, I always consider Arcane Lock a throwaway spell, but it's come in real handy. Sometimes it's just like, all you gotta do is close the door. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Rudy. <laughs> you just you close the door and you lock it, you're like, and then you turn around and you stare at this vampire. <laughs> like, you're in here with me. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, cool. 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 I, I think. Uh, I think we might need to do a video talking about how Arcane Lock is actually a surprisingly clutch spell. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well done, especially Rudy. in well doors, done. dungeons with doors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was your big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. 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 Uh, so uh, the dregs. Um, Okay, this this makes the door really, really strong now. So it's much harder to break open. So they're gonna try to break it open, uh, but they're gonna need like a, yeah. They, they're pounding on the door, but it increases, like it's, it's already a DC 18 to break this door open. So they need a 28 to break it open now, uh, which <laughs> they, they can't get. <laughs> cool, I love it, Rudy, clutch play. <laughs> Of our game lock. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and it's an abjuration spell, so Eldritch <laughs> doesn't get it. It's such a weird, such a weird play. Uh, you are a very creative player, Jill. Thank you. Uh, well done. Uh, I guess we go to the top of the round with Wilhelm. I stab the beast. <laughs> I I stab him right in the heart. Uh getting a 23 to hit it's a hit and um yeah I'll, I'll sneak attack oh <laughs> get him wilhelm oh man Uh, 36 damage. You run him through the heart and it bursts and the creature Ugh. collapses into a mass of blood, bone, and, sin and, and liquid sinew upon the ground that just begins to writhe before turning to ash. I imagine that like it wasn't even a graceful like parry and stab. I actually take my blade in two hands, drive it into his chest, and then hammer it in yeah and then he falls to pieces as the creature collapses into a goo that's where we're gonna take our break <laughs> <laughs> and we are back from our short rest we have restocked on all of our consumables regained our spell slots and are ready to play some more D. &D. so where we left things off was with an arcane locked uh, door. Be sure to mark off a little bit of that delirium for the material component, Rudy. Uh, and the... Um, so, so there's pounding at the arcane locked door. You are trapped in the bottom of the cistern. What are you going to do? Oh, so so we have a plan. We need... Um... We need to get this grate off, right? I have, and I hold up a little file from my thieves tools, and I, I, I will get working on that right away. Wrath, 
Can you make the uh, the door to the well disappear? If you work on that, I'll work on the grate. Um, combined effort. Um, I mean, I'm pr- I'm pretty strong. I, I'm sure I could do something about this. I'm starting to. I mean, yeah, you you could do whatever. I'm I'm already at the grate filing at like the bolts <laughs> and um i'm going to take a potion of growth and enlarge myself to big rudy <laughs> big rudy <laughs> for let's see one d4 amount of hours two hours <laughs> Big Rudy. Got big Rudy for big two Rudy hours. Back. I, I, I'm filing the bolt and I just turn around and I'm like, oh. Oh. Okay. Like, All right, Big Rudy, what are you going to do? All right, I'm going to try to get this lock great off and I start to like pull, try to pull the great. All right, give me a strength check with advantage. All right. And. Large and in charge. Uh, and I'm sorry. I just have to look up the enlarge reduce and see what is my yeah. So fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. Uh, the first pull actually does not pull it open. Uh, give give it a uh, um. So it uh, y- you can all roll me a d six. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Six. One. Five. <laughs> Okay, um, there is a rattling at the door, um, <clears throat> but it manages to hold out. Um, you can try again. All right, Rudy, I'm try I, again. I, I, I brace myself against Rudy. I go, you got this, and I'm going to cast Guidance. I was okay, also going to tie a rope around it and have us pull on the rope together. But Okay. Does anybody have Rudy. a crowbar? Yes. You do? Yes. All right, I can use right. some leverage. Okay. I take the crowbar in my big giant hands. So we're all helping. You have guidance and I want to help. So wait, I can't really give you double advantage, can yeah. I? That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. I'm uh... helping anyway. I'm there in spirit. <laughs> don't forget the D4 for guidance. 29. <laughs> you rip it off the, the, just rip it right out of the stone. <laughs> Pulls right, right off. Can I gently place it in front of the other door, knowing it's not going to do anything to stop anything? But I'm just like, maybe that will, maybe that will get in their way a little bit. Um, there are other coffins down here, so we need to move quickly and quietly. But I say we um, look for a way out. After you, gentlemen. Okay. You squeeze down. <laughs> Into the can central I, chamber. Can I squeeze through this or? Yep, yep. It's, okay. a t- it's a tight squeeze, but you can. Well, this room is horrible. So this is the coffin that burst open. This coffin over here is unadorned with delirium, but the others are all have the same construction. They have blood spilled across them, chains wrapped around them and then a padlock with a delirium shard atop them and then there is the horrific monument to this goat this bloated this bloated goat headed uh, bloat goat ha huh. um <laughs> not the bloat goat not the bloat goat um <laughs> this bloated, goat-headed, uh, demonic figure with a rotting body atop a throne of skulls and blood. And it is a thick pool of blood, and you can see that it's sloshing around our bones uh, of other creatures beneath. And an altar of delirium uh, and some strange tomes that are laid out upon it. Um, I'm going to head immediately over to the uh, the coffin over here. And mm-hmm. I want to kind of examine it and try to see if I can discern anything about the occupant of this coffin. Uh, the coffin is closed. Um, and like the others, it is locked mm. um, from the outside. But this one doesn't have delirium on it. It doesn't have delirium and it doesn't have blood on it. Uh, I'm going to try to peck the lock. Okay. 
<clears throat> uh, give me a check with your thieves tools. Uh, I got a 13. Okay. It takes you about a minute of work to crack it open, uh, during which time you can all roll me a d6. You're welcome, everybody. I want to take a greater healing potion while doing this. Two. Four. Five. Okay. The chamber is eerily silent aside from the battering against the door that has been arcane locked. Um, and uh, you are able to break the cof- the, the lock on the coffin open, Wilhelm, after about a minute of work. Um, Rudy, you can drink the healing potion during this time because the effect has worn off by now. Um, and the, um, the coffin opens and there is a man inside garbed in the uniform of the hooded lanterns wearing a fine engra- finely engraved breastplate with the crest of Drakenheim upon it um, and a hood over his head. I'm going to reach down and remove the hood. Um, the, fig- the, the figure is gagged, uh, but it is Elias Drexel. And as you pull the, the hood off, there is a, a, a an audible like gasp beneath the gag uh, as as the the hood is, is pulled up. He's alive. All right, old boy, <laughs> let's get going. And I'm I, I prop him out of the coffin and I'm going to like get under his arm. And want me to do it <laughs> uh, as I like struggle with this large man. I'm like, yes, Rudy, it might be more appropriate if you do the carrying. As you, uh, as you pull him up, you can see that in the scattered beneath, beneath him in the coffin are several pieces of delirium. And judging on his condition, uh, he might be at like contamination level four or five. We need to get him out of here immediately. And I think our only exit, and I kind of like nudge my head towards the back yeah. of the room there there's like his fingernails are starting to fall out he he might and like bits of his hair kind of falling out as well um and and there's the visible signs as you pull that that someone has been drinking his blood hmm. i have a question does aqua expergo help after you've been no aqua expergo does not help a- after you need to use purge contamination and if I use one on him now, will that help prevent him from getting one in the future, or at least giving an advantage on it? Uh, yes, it would. It would. It would help him from getting future uh, um, I stab him with contamination. The <laughs> oh god! <laughs> Take the... <laughs> Just <laughs> he, we left the gag in. <laughs> yeah, the gag's the gag's staying in. I was like, you never know. Just just in case. <laughs> I, I you, you pick them up. You pick them up with one hand, and you just jam them. <laughs> like, <laughs> throw them over my shoulder, and I'm like, all right, let's get him out of here. I um, um, yeah, I'm gonna head towards the back with Wrath. Okay, you can see the that pit. towards the back here, there is a pit that descends into, uh, into the darkness below. There is a door here, and another grate over here. And then the horrible altar of this bloated goat demon. Uh, I'll get Houdini to check out the giant hole in the ground. Then I send Houdini down and I go into his vision. Okay. Uh, Houdini flutters down um, into a uh, cavern of darkness. Um... It descends. Um, as you descend down, you can see that there is the glow, the prismatic glow of delirium crystals in here. And the room that that Houdini appears in is a rough cavern that has become a charnel house. There is an altar of blood at the center of the chamber adorned with, with candles and skulls and all manner of flayed and dismembered bodies strewn about this cavernous chamber. There are pools of brackish water and delir- and clusters of delirium crystals glowing all, all along the walls. Um, this, uh, the, the cavern, um, this cavernous chamber extends uh, in this direction 
uh, and actually, you can actually see that it begins rising up in 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 that direction. Uh, I send Houdini, or fly through Houdini's eyes over the. Make screen. a perception check for Houdini. Houdini, are you perceptive? Seven. <laughs> As Houdini flies in that direction, a massive mouth closes around him. Whoop! And y- your vision snaps back. <laughs> uh. So do we take the hole, Rudy? I mean, something ate Houdini, so I would not recommend it if we don't have to go that way. <laughs> um. But there was blood and lots of corpses, lots of delirium. Um. It could be a way out if we don't have any other, but there's something down there that we'd probably have to fight. All right. What about these doors? Um, I'm yeah, going to come up to the grate. The yeah, I'll check it the is grate. A, is a, is a grate of similar construction to the first. Um, again, the, the, this bar grate that has no obvious way of opening it uh, with a set of stairs leading down again. Oh, boy. Uh, and Wrath, the other doorway, uh, this is a right. This is a door of normal construction, um, and it uh, it can be opened. I I want to try to quietly open it. Okay. You open the door into a room that might have once been a wine cellar of some kind, or at least that's what is it, what its shape suggests. But instead of a wine cellar, it is a room that is filled with crates, lead-lined crates of delirium. Many of the crates bear the symbol of the hooded lanterns. Pick some of that up. We can sell it back. I, I, uh, I want to try to take some kind of memento. Like, I want to try to put together, is there a smaller box that I can shove into the bag of holding that contains, that has the Hooded Lanterns logo on it and contains Delirium? Um, there's a couple smaller strong boxes. Um, uh, roll me a d6. Three. Yeah, there, there's, there's a smaller container that clearly, um, uh, that you could pick up. Uh, there's, there is actually a ledger uh, amongst them that uh, outlines the inventory uh, of of a shipment of delirium. Can I figure out if this was sold or stolen? Uh, this was sold. It's a bill of sale. I'm gonna hide the ledger. Um, and I'm going to gather up a bit more delirium. Um, how much can I just quickly throw it, throw into the bag of holding like smaller can, pieces? You, yeah, you can, you can grab five delirium fragments. Okay. And then I'm going to return. There is uh, a store of delirium. It is much more than they would ever need. They must be. This must be the source that we saw on the machine, the elven machinery. Mm. Mm. The the uh, Elias Drexel growls under, uh, um, and uh, though he he's actually still bound, and he gestures, <laughs> and and he's clearly gasping, um, like. Be, Whatever condition he's under, he's definitely incapacitated, which means that he can't take actions, but he can still move. Uh, while this is all happening, can I drink some potions? Yeah. Cool. Um, I'm going to walk up to Elias Drexel, and I'm going to remove the gag. He, he says, who are you? Where do you come from? Are you, uh, did Petra send you? <sighs> He screeches. He, he he gasps. You have the vials. You have Aqua Expergo. Do you have anything else? Um, we have lots, but you gotta keep it down. There's other um, vampires in here. I I reach in and I'm like, all right, old man, let's let's get you patched up. And I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of 
hand him a greater healing potion. Um, he, because he's incapacitated, he's actually in no state to even administer a healing potion to himself. Like, he, he tries, but, like, it's like all the strength of his body is gone. Uh, I walk over, I take the potion. You have to feed him. Lice Drexel, you son of a bitch. And I, I, I feed him <laughs> the, the potion of greater healing. Thank you. Thank you. I am the Lord, the Lieutenant Commander, Elias Drexel, of the Lord of Lanterns. I came here on a, to negotiate with the Countess, but she's, she's a traitor. She's gone mad. There's something, there's something deeply wrong with her. Uh, yeah, she's a vampire, Elias. What That's were what... you negotiating? Military aid, her help against the Illyrians. She wanted payment in delirium. She said she she had a buyer. We had more money for more mercenaries. She had good soldiers. But I met with her privately and she took me as a prisoner, chained me down here. Fellas, I'm going to suggest we try to move it along as we uh, may not know when these are going to open up again. Agreed? Yeah, I agree. And Elias, you can just add this to the list of your legacy. The uh, mistake you made trying to make allies with a vampire. And I turn and I'm going to start um, trying to, again, file down this grate. Do, do they know... Does the Academy know that you were selling Delirium to the Countess? Are you from the Academy? I am. No. They don't. Did, did you say no because you know that I am from the Academy? Said no because you just saved my life. And I, at least the least I can owe you is the truth. No, the Academy doesn't know that I sold it to them. Why would you sell the Delirium? to anyone else because the, the academy. academy can't give me an army the academy can't give me an army and that's what we need right now i mean why don't once we get you out of here why don't you just collect your men and you can slaughter everybody in this castle that's the plan mm. how how can we get Petra and Ansel to come to your aid. I tipped them off that you were potentially um, a prisoner, but where would they meet? What would their what would be your best guess? There's an inn in the village nearby. The Moose and Squirrel, that's where the rest of the men and my, my soldiers are staying. I was staying here with the Countess. Rudy, a little help with this grate. And I go over and I <laughs> take the, the crowbar on my hands again. Do I know you? Did you did you serve in the war? He points. It's not clear if he's search pointing at Rudy or Wilhelm. You seem familiar. Who are, who are you? What's your name? I mean, I'm I'm Rudy Whitaker. I did serve under you in in the war. We haven't, I don't know if we've met personally. And I continue to crowbar. <laughs> I'm a bit bigger than I normally am right now. Wait, Ru Rudy, you, did you see? Yeah, no, never mind, that checks out. No, 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 not, not, not you, 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 man. What's your name? Uh, you can call me Wolfsbane. Wolfsbane, oh, they. Well, thank you. Just the the you know the the crystals it addles the mind. Oh, my mind. We have met before, Elias. Mm. Mm. Long time ago, just passing on a bridge one day. Uh, well, then it's my good fortune that you've 
to meet you again. Uh, mm. you, you're a brave, brave soul, you, to, to brave this. Thank you. Don't uh, thank me yet. Let's get you out of here. Right, right. Okay. Rudy? I'm going to get this grate open. Um, All right. Was the guidance still, or just that was just the one? I can, I can, I, I'm going to touch your... <laughs> your uh, <laughs> uh, back of your knee, <laughs> but my hand. Oh, good thing. Uh, Twenty-three. You rip the grate open once more. Nice. And I pick up Elias Drexel and I toss him over my shoulder. It's like, on our way, boys. The opening leads to a very narrow, uh, a very narrow hall that extends downward sharply before ending uh, in a uh, small circular chamber. It is a stoic chamber with a simple stone slab upon which is a richly appointed coffin. In the ceiling above is a very thin grate, perhaps six inches wide. I don't think we're getting out of that grate. <laughs> well, this is just great, isn't it? Huh? Huh? Uh... <laughs> the... <laughs> the... The the cover on the well portion back at the mm -hmm. beginning, was it like a stone cover that someone put over top of it? Uh, it, it, it was a heavy uh, um, iron bound wooden cover, like the type that you would use to close over a well, like a storm door. Mm. Rudy, mm. if you could fly, for example, mm -hmm. Do you think you could break through that cover? An iron door? Ah, uh, I don't know. I'd have to have access probably to whatever's keeping it closed. And even then, I don't know. I think we, we'd either have to go down that hole there or uh, maybe fight those delirium monsters to get back the way we were going to get in here i if if a character is flying can they use the flying to sort of gain sort of like something to push off of something to yeah, strength like yeah, does she still have her same strength yeah th 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 she does yeah that's not unreasonable broody mm. i imbued you to fly <laughs> and i cast fly on rudy all right, okay. I guess I'm gonna go try Rudy to open is now this. Flying giant Rudy. <laughs> I can fly. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Oh my! Rudy can fly. All Big right, old flying Rudy. Big I, break it, Rudy. Uh, break it. I go up to the top of the well, and I'm. I guess. Are you guys gonna come with? <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm following along. I'm holding on to your leg. <laughs> no, okay. uh, no, you break through first. You break through first, and then we'll come. All right, I'm gonna try to break this. Alrighty. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Seventeen. You push the storm door open, uh, and revealing the covered well and the courtyard above. Can we all grab onto Rudy and she can fly us out of here? Yeah, there's also the rope from the bucket that you could, okay, you could yeah. whir up. I think I like the idea of like holding onto her leg like a like a young Like she a has a lie she has Elias in her front arms. I'm on her back and you're clutching her leg and with the cat and Houdini, with Bruce and Houdini on either side. Oh no, Houdini's all, done. <laughs> oh yeah. With Bruce beside you, you soar out. Oh. With um, all of us. And as you <laughs> soar out, 
you hear of, uh, into the rain uh, uh, above and the flash of lightning. You hear a laughter in the air saying, leaving so soon. Uh, as you look up and the gargoyles upon the top of the tower begin to crack away and detach from the top of the castle as they swoop down to attack. Roll for initiative. Oh no. I'm gonna punch some gargoyles in the face. Oh. Uh, 21. 13. Four. Okay, here we go. <laughs> We're just riding Rudy. <laughs> All okay, the so, my sorry. Is... We got 21 for Wilhelm. Yep. 13 for Rudy. And four for Wrath. I like the You Can Fly song from Peter Pan, but in a deep Rudy voice. <laughs> and and the, the portcullis is here, just so you know. And can each of you roll me a d6 as well? I would love to. My favorite Five. Five. Six. Ooh. Okay. Uh, fortune is on your side for the time being. Um, the gargoyles. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, f thus, the first to act then will be Wilhelm. Uh, so I see these gargoyles coming to life. Yeah. Um, yeah. I hop off of Rudy to like land on the ground safely, and I. Um, uh, and Elias Drexel, he basically just collapses to the ground. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and do I count as having moved this round? Uh, I'll say that no, this is like a fresh, fresh turn. Yeah. All right, then um, I am going to give myself advantage on an attack against this gargoyle right here. And I'm going to okay. use uh, yeah, steady aim. So I, I hop off of Rudy, I see the gargoyles start to crack open, and I line up a shot. Just as the stone starts to fall away, I blast it in the face. Good thing I used steady aim. I rolled a 1 and a 14, which means 22 to hit. Uh, that is a hit. Uh, and because I had advantage, I will sneak attack that gargoyle. Sneak, 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 sneak. Uh, 28 damage. Oh, okay. Brutal. Uh, I get, uh, yeah, that brutalizes one of those gargoyles. Ouch. And then I'm going to move uh, to near the portcullis. Actually, I'm going to move uh, to the stairs. Okay. Uh, you, you can't move, though, because you steady aim. Oh, right. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yep. Paying attention, I am. Yeah. Cool. That's my yeah. turn. Alrighty. The gargoyles. Oh, no. Uh, they swoop down. Uh, one's going to swoop down on Wrath. Uh, these two are going to swoop down on you, Wilhelm. I love it. And this one is going to swoop down on Rudy uh, from uh, from above. So uh, on Wrath, um, they fly down with their claws and their bite. Uh, Wrath, uh, I get a two. Wow, two twos. Damn. Um, pardon me. Um, the uh, against Wilhelm. Um, I make four attacks. I get a critical hit. Yes. Love a it. nine, uh, a nine and a 19, uh, actually a 19 on the die. So I rolled two fives at a 20 and a 19. So I get a crit uh, with the bite and a hit with one of the claws. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. So the bite uh, is going to be 14 points of damage. And the claw is going to be seven points of damage as it swoops down and basically tears into you and bites deeply into your shoulder. I managed to get my hand in between its head and me, so I'm going to half that damage as I kind of okay. push it away from that bite. So what was the claw damage again? Uh, seven damage. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And Rudy, I get an 18 and a 11 against you. Uh, shield. So okay. 18 AC. Cool. Um, and you can see that the gargoyles here and here are beginning to shudder and shudder to life. 
with that, Rudy, it's your turn. I take my now giant axes and I smash this gargoyle a lot. Three times to nice. be exact. Um, 19 to hit. It's a hit. Smash. Oh, and smash. Uh, 13 damage. Stone crackles away from its body and uh, sh- cracks form across its uh, across its chest as you uh, slam your axe into it. And another uh, 24 to hit. Also a hit. Oh. Yes. Uh, three. 17 damage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a resounding okay. crack and, and, and it's just like splitting stone. And another. Another. That one, maybe. <laughs> maybe less. Uh, 14 to hit. Uh, the 14 is a miss. Oh. And I say, let's get this man to safety, boys. With that, we go to Wrath. Um, I, Bruce flies at the creature that, uh, attacked me to, okay. and I'm going to try to blast it in the head. Uh, oh, I got a 14 as well. It's a miss. Ah, and I take another shot. Um, just going totally wide, um, as, uh, as I engage with this creature. Okay. That's all I have. Uh, Wilhelm, it is your turn. The one that I shot in the face, I now plunge my rapier into its chest. Just so that you are, because Elias Rexel is incapacitated, you uh, ac- you would not be able to get sneak attack on that one, if that's what you're hoping for. Ah. Uh... I mean, I'm beside one. Yep. I'm going to go for the one that Rudy's attacking then. All right. So as the two swoop down, I turn to the one that Rudy's attacking. I pull out my blade and I drive it into the creature. uh, Getting a 21 to hit. That's a hit. And I will sneak attack it. Uh, 24 damage. Ooh. Uh, what happens? Uh, so Rudy cr- like gets two axe blades into it, and then as she goes with her third axe swing and misses, the creature ducks out of the way and right towards me, and I drive my blade through its eye as it turns away from Rudy. Didn't even see me coming. Nice. Um, and then I turn, and I'm going to uh, fire... Actually... I'm going to bonus action disengage and I am going to uh, just move away from these two and stand Okay. over on the other side of the well. All right. Uh, we go to the gargoyles. Um, one of the gargoyles is going to fly completely around Rudy and continue to pursue Wilhelm. Hey. Uh, in fact, both of them are. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Yeah, they, they, you, you, you've actually been the one that's done the most damage so far, so they're just going right for you. They just fly right over the Big Rudy and uh, continue to press their attack on you, Will. I am good at making friends. Uh, I get a 12, and a, the first one gets two misses for sure. Uh, I've, uh, I'm dodging. I get a 19 and a 17. I dodge second. into those two attacks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, that's two hits. The bite and the claw rip into you uh, for a grand total of 14 points of damage across two attacks. If I half one of those by one... It that... would be four less damage. All right. Uh, and two attack wrath. Ah! Uh, getting a 11 and a 20 to hit. Uh, 20 definitely hits. Uh, so that's going to be five points of uh, sla- slashing damage as the claw rakes across you, uh, Wrath, and I need a concentration check for flight. Uh, I get a eight. I don't think that's uh, enough. F- flying Big Rudy is no Rudy! longer flying Big Rudy. 
I go to fly and I'm like, oh no! <laughs> You're hovering on the ground and then you just touch the ground. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, and the, um, you can all roll a d6. Ooh. Six. Two. <laughs> Rudy? Two. Okay, uh, the other gargoyles have not come to life yet. The fortune is in your favor yet, still. Wilhelm, uh, uh, we've got Wilhelm, we got gargoyles, we got Rudy now. All right, I'm gonna shift over and say, you're not getting away from me! And I take this gargoyle's head off with my axes. Well, I'm gonna attempt it, at least. Um, four, 14. 14 to hit? Yeah. Yeah, that's no, yeah, no, no, no. Let's it's try again. That that's that's the third attack that's missed by one so far. Yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I feel that. Thirteen. <laughs> There's one by two. Woo! Less okay. well, yeah, no, no, no. Less less than that. Less than that. come on. No, I'm not rolling with that one You're anymore. You're not getting away. <laughs> You're not getting away. Well, then I action surge to give it two more shots, because why not? Oh, that's much better. Um, 27 to hit. To hit. That's a solid hit. 15 damage. Nice. And then I take one more. Oh, yay. Uh, 21 to hit. You got it. That one is less damage. <laughs> that one's nine. Okay. Wrath, it's your turn. Oof. I'm going to try to dive away from this creature um, uh, and let it take a swing at me if it wants to. Okay, it does. It loves it. Uh, it oh, the die like <laughs> rolled over from the 20. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just, it, 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 but it's still a 19 to hit. Oh, that's, oh no. <laughs> it was supposed to be like a two <laughs> for five damage. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> and then Bruce flies directly at him. Like he wound up uh, for it. And uh, I get a, yeah, that's better. A 23 to hit for uh nine damage and i'm gonna launch him back into the like try to repel him back into the wall and then i yeah, turn he smashes into the wall and i and i'm gonna shoot the one um that rudy uh was attacking beside okay. wilhelm okay um and i it it hits a wall <laughs> i okay. shoot a wall watch it you almost so hit me terrible terrible rolls. over the patter of the rain you hear another noise. It's the sound of galloping hooves. They're close. Julan. There's more than one. Multiple. Several horses thundering, pounding in the rain just over the courtyard walls. Is it Petra and Ansem? Or is it more uh, vampires? Vampire horses. Vamp horses? <laughs> <laughs> With that, we go to Wilhelm. Uh, terrified of the vamp horses coming. I <laughs> The I, galloping. I, the galloping of hooves. I, I take my rapier out and I stab at the one uh, in front of me next to Rudy. Nice. Uh, 17 to hit. That is a hit because it's higher than 15. <laughs> Not yeah. Not one lower. <laughs> and I'm going to sneak attack. Thank you, Rudy. Welcome. <laughs> Rudy, get the vamp horses. <laughs> Fend them off with your giant axes. Uh, I do 30 <laughs> damage. Oh, God. Uh, that destroys it. <laughs> yeah, happens? so Rudy again is like swinging and it's dodging out of the way of all of Rudy's attacks. And again, it just doesn't even notice my, my, I'm standing next to it, but it's too busy focusing on Rudy that I just wait for the opportune moment when it like 
it like screeches, its head like tilts backwards to screech, and I stab it through the throat and drop it dead. And then nice. I twirl to this other one. Was this the guy that I attacked first? Uh, yes, it, yes, it is. I twirl and take out my crossbow and fire at the one, the one that's remaining there. Or I guess there's also that one, but yeah. Uh, I hit, I rolled an 18, so. Perfect. Um, and that's gonna be nine damage. Nice. And then I'm going to uh, hop back next to Raph. There is the sound of a, a burst and a zip noise as and a small chink chink uh as uh, a metal grapple hook uh hits the walls uh of the uh, of the fortification and with a quick zipping noise two hooded figures step atop the um the the battlement walls uh, with, uh, with weapons in hand. Um. It's Petra and Ansem. Uh, and they, 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 fire, they fire some shots at the, uh, at, at one of the, the, the gargoyles. Uh, scoring. Wow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, they shoot one of the gargoyles down for you guys. <laughs> with a, with a quick, flip, 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 flip of arrows uh ventilating it as as it, as it collapses and petra calls out we saw you burst through the well we wondered what was going on we've been watching this whole time it's the commander it's him we've got horses let's go quickly or as you get them over to the horses i'll take care of this gargoyle I approach him Alrighty. With that, Rudy, it is your turn. I approach this gargoyle. The intent to kill him. Rip it apart! Careful, the vamp horses! Petra, Ansem! <laughs> Those were our horses, you idiot! <laughs> 20, 21 to hit. Nice. Uh, Using the vampires against them. I love it. 13 damage. Um, the, uh, the, with that, what happens to the final gargoyle? Oh, I'm like, I've always wanted to try to cut off a gargoyle's head, and I <laughs> smash just, it. Just like, there's the crack of, like, the statue, and it crumbles to dust. With that, uh, as more gargoyles begin to crackle away from the, the keep, what will the group of you do? Uh, I grab another side of, uh, Elias Drexel, and... And we'll home the other. I grab all of you with my <laughs> giant arms and start to run towards the horses. Like, <laughs> and with that, you saddle up on the horses, the other hooded lanterns, and gallop off into the th in into the rainy night. Um, they they've got a couple extra horses. Obviously, Rudy, you're quite huge right now, so it's a little bit problematic, but. We'll handle Ride that. Like a tiny <laughs> Can you run? Can you just run yeah. at the same yeah. speed? Yeah. Is your uh, um and, and as they 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 gallop off, they um as you all be, begin to ride off, Petra says, "We we're not going back to the to the inn. We're worried that the Countess might know to find us there. We're going to head off into the woods and see if we can make make it through the night in a." In a, in, a, in a different place so that they're off our scent. We will come too. Very good. You did it. You saved him. Thank you. Don't it's not over it. yet. He might have a, a few uh, hard times. We gave him some aqua expurgo. This might be very unpleasant for him afterwards, just so you know. You, you have aqua expurgo. Add one. Right, the academy. Okay then. Let's. Uh, we we might we can help him. We just have to get to safety where we can spend some time. 
we may need to work quickly if if we have found the lair of the countess we should strike as soon as possible for, before they gain their troops back do you have the ability to attack come dawn let's make a plan they you ride with the hooded lanterns to an abandoned cottage in the forest it's an old logging cabin perhaps where, which they have identified as a as a quick place that they can saddle up um you're with six other hooded lanterns and petra and ansem uh, all said and they they barge through the door and bring the lord commander into a, an old cot where um a bubble where immediately petra and ansem kind of get into their packs um, and they uh, kind of set a fire and light light up the cauldron and start preparing the material components for the purge contamination spell. Uh, as rangers, they can actually cast the spell because it's available to every class. Um, so uh, they uh, and they've now learned it. Uh, so they will get that ready, and it will be a bit of an ordeal for Elias Drexel, but uh, but nonetheless, they will they will. See, see to him. Uh, Ansem says, the Lord Commander will be very weak after we, we get the contamination out of his body. What happened? Where did you find it? What was wrong with him? What was going on down there? Well, the Countess is a monster. And the Countess was attempting to turn Elias Drexel into a monster himself using delirium and draining him of his blood. The Petra mutters under her breath. But I, I thought she was just. We needed her, her military forces. We needed all this. What? Why would she turn on us like this? We were going to work together. I don't think it was ever her plan to work with you. I think she just wanted some fresh blood. She promised... She promised us soldiers. She promised us military aid. Why would she try to do this to the Lord Commander if she was going to help us? Well, uh, with vampires, and I've <laughs> shrunk back down at this point, uh, they can take over their the minds of uh, those that serve them and and that they have control over. They got some crazy tricks, but who knows what kind of power she was trying to bring forth by taking over your uh, your uh, lieutenant. Perhaps with uh, the Lord Commander under their spell they would be able to, instead of giving you forces, gain the Hooded Lanterns as new troops for their army. The army of undead. By the flame. Flames of the Abyss, no doubt. Hmm. Ansem says, we can't, let, we can't let her get away with this. We'll have to destroy her. The good news is, based on my limited knowledge, uh, we would need to find her in a resting place, which we happen to have pinpointed. We know how to get to the resting place, and I might have half of a plan. Um, Wrath, I know I usually ask a lot of your spell casting, but... I can't make an ore. I was going to say, I mean, you only asked for an oar. I still do not know <laughs> what you seek. This, this one might be more of a stretch than an oar, but I'm also wondering if either you or your sister have the means of giving us some way to do what the vampires do. Turn into a mist, turn into a gas. A, 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 we could... The, the room... With, with the coffin, there was that small grate up above it. If during the day we could ourselves become gas using magic powers, go in 
and kill her while she rests. That might be an opportune moment. I must ask, does, will she rest at each dawn? This is the question mark. This is why it's only half a plan. I don't yet have all the information to know if it is a good plan, but I do think that if we found means to become missed ourselves, then that would alleviate a lot of pressure. And I've heard of spellcasters doing such things before. This spell exists, and it is something that is achievable. Um, I ask because that grate, that that window that she uses that doorway if it could only be widened it could also be the exposure needed to destroy her then perhaps we need explosives as well and we need to confront her blow open the ceiling of that room and keep her there until the sun well while the sun is up petra growls uh, as Ansem is working on the spell on the on the lieutenant commander, as as Petra growls, but we needed her army. We needed her soldiers. She has the steel fangs. They're one of the most elite mercenary regiments in Westmar. She was going to. She promised them to us. Well, Petra. An army might exist, and we haven't yet talked to the Steel Fangs. Perhaps they are... This is a risk, but if they are unaware of the Countess's evil, then cutting the head of the snake off, the body rots. They will have nowhere to go. Perhaps being recruited by the Hooded Lanterns is an optimal choice for a group of Steel Fang warriors. And we do know where they are residing. They're in the old lodge. So perhaps heading there and talking mm. to the Steel Fangs and seeing where their allegiance lies and making a judgment call on whether or not they would align with us. Might be mighty fine folks, who knows? Might perhaps as well we can could, could convince them to help us storm the keep and take down the Countess. Perhaps indeed. Maybe you could offer them delirium, as you so easily sell and trade. By whose authority did you have to sell such quantities? The vast amounts that we saw in there was more than enough to, to it could crumble the whole castle. The delirium in Drakenheim is by right the property of King George von Kessel. It is him who decides how the delirium is used, and it is he that decides what is to be done with it, not the Academy. Despite any agreements that we might have with your organization, you still have to buy it from us. So if there's you're a letting, higher bidder? You're and letting look a at this. boy determine what is to be done with delirium. We wouldn't be in this position if you had not so easily just traded it with hands, it is all over this continent. It is disappearing. The The Academy is the only true controller, the only true source. We are the ones that should be dealing with this, with this dangerous material, not, not common uh, knights and, and, and those looking to raise an army. There are other- We have given the Amethyst Academy everything they've asked for at every single turn. We sided with them when we had the option for other allies, and that brought war upon upon Westamar from the forces of Illyria. Don't talk to me about privileging the Academy or betraying the Academy. We've been staunch allies with them, and they've given us very little in return. I mean... And so you decided that you're, you are the best one to deal with Delirium, and you know what's best. What what experience do you have? War is, regardless of what the delirium does, regardless of what happens in Drakenheim, war is coming upon us and we need an army. Otherwise, they're going to burn everything to the ground. If we don't make that choice, if we don't defend our home, that choice is going to be made for us. 
Did the Academy say that they would not trade the Delirium for soldiers? Did they ban this? Why do it under the secrecy? The Academy can't give us soldiers under the Edicts of Lumen. They can't give us the... They can not They can give us weapons. They can give us summoned creatures. But they can't put boots on the ground. Now I understand. I understand. You're working with what you have. Something valuable that other people want. And I understand that there is a war coming. But I don't think you understand how dangerous this delirium has been. Not just in Drakenheim, but outside. I've been outside. fighting in Drakenheim my entire life, old lady. Don't talk to me about not knowing the- Old the, the, lady? Who you calling old? <laughs> I am a seasoned warrior. You haven't seen anything when it comes to what the real world is outside of that little city of yours. You better watch it, little pup. I've lived my entire life in war. I don't know anything else. Mm. You haven't seen the real war like I've seen. And what I see, the battle war fighting out there, yeah, you may have lots going on in Drakenheim but your war is affecting everyone else and we're the ones picking up the pieces if you've ever seen one of your friends transform into a monster and then proceed to slaughter one of your other comrades i've seen plenty of people turn into monsters i've seen enough for a lifetime i think but that doesn't change the fact that drakenheim is our home and we'll fight and all those people who live there, who gave their lives so far, if we don't keep fighting, they gave their lives in vain. I'm not saying don't fight. I'm just saying you're going to end up fighting a battle on two fronts, and that's a war that ain't going to be won. Petra, you're right. The It's, I know you need these soldiers. This plan has backfired, but I have an idea. This Countess needs to be destroyed. There may be an opportunity to gather the Steel Fangs for your aid. When the Countess is destroyed, you help us recover the Delirium, and we can return it to the Academy. And I will give you this. And I'm gonna pull out the ledger. I can't make this decision. I'm going to have to run it by the... We'll have to discuss this with the commander. She turns to Ansem. How's it going? And turn around just to see Ansem put a bucket up to Elias Drex. So then he's... <laughs> it's working. It's working. Um... Drexel is pale as he retches up the corruption that uh, that inhabits his body, and um, and after a short while, he um, collapses in, into sleep. Petra turns and Ansem says, "It's been a long night. We should get some sleep. Talk about this in the morning." Thank you for coming. All right. Are you? Do you guys want to take a take a rest there? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go hide in a tiny hut just outside. Uh, if you guys, uh, if you two are uh, up for it, mm -hmm. um, a comfy little cozy little place, so okay. we can have maybe a, a private uh, conversation. Okay, you guys create a tiny hut of your own to camp outside. The hooded lanterns take up inside the cabin. Long rest, short rest? Yeah, you can take a long rest if you want to now. Oh yeah, that felt good. I found this ledger. This shows that the hooded lanterns were dealing with the Countess. They are the reason 
that there is so much delirium in this castle. They, well, they moved enough there. delirium to get it on the map. Mm. When I was de- when I was through Houdini's eyes, there was a lot more delirium down that pit. It's they're bringing it up, but it's it's growing underneath this place. So then the question oh, is: no. Have the have the hooded lanterns been doing this for some time, or is the shipments of delirium just to add to the overall abundance of delirium found here? That's the question we need answered. And Wrath, hold on to that ledger. It's it's our best leverage right now. If the mm-hmm. Academy finds out that they were selling this delirium, do you think I should... I do not know if I should involve River. I mean, we have a sending stone. <laughs> I pull it out and I'm like, we could send her a message. Let her know. I do not yet know if Petra and Ansem are going to be allies or enemies. I think that with the ledger in our hands and with the way conversations are going, we shouldn't play all of our cards just yet. If we are going to talk to River, I don't want to be deceptive. There's no need for that. I will be. Uh, Okay, Raph. But this could bode well for, for us. If we are able to recover the delirium and gain back control of the castle, and assist with the Hooded Lanterns gaining access to a large mercenary company, we would really turn the tide. I think that our best play is to try to get Ansem and Petra on our side. We want the Hooded Lanterns' help, especially in this matter with dealing with the Countess. And the Steel Fangs or the Silver Fangs, sorry, uh, may be beneficial as well if we can convince them. We don't yet know if they're monsters or not. Rudy, you were a you were a battlefield. Uh, did you, you commanded a group, didn't you? Did you were you the leader of a group? I was one of the leaders of our group. Yeah. Well, I was in the war with them. If if we position something along the lines of, of, of like we have military experience within our ranks between well mostly you but th- that's got to be worth something we can we, we can start a force of our own with the, the, the silver fangs and, and Ansem and Petra and the hooded lanterns we can storm the keep we can destroy the countess and take back Kesselholm and we need to take back Kesselholm. You... I mean, it's not really in a position of military importance, is it? This is interesting. We carry this leverage over this Elias Drexel. I met him at dinner, but he knew... He knew you. Yes, I, I mentioned we had met before. What do you know of him? If we are going to work with him, what do you know of this man? I would work with Petra and Ansa. I have no plans of working with Elias Drexel. You do not trust him. I do not trust him. I would never trust him. I saved his life because to see a man in that state, to see what was becoming of him, Nobody deserves that. That he, is that is that is difficult. How are you gonna how are you gonna work with Petra and Ansem when he leads them? We're and not work with that him? Out. Yes, it might have made more sense to let him die and I and, couldn't and then Petra and Ansem would be the ones we work with. I mean, but why would we let him die? What Ansem is walking towards your tiny hut. I unzip it. <laughs> I don't know how it works. It's like, I put like it a tent. <laughs> he, he, um, Did you want Ansem, to step in? I, I 
I, I'm sorry to interrupt. The, the commander's rested somewhat, but he keeps... You said your name was Wolfbane? That's correct. He, he keeps asking for you. Then I will go talk to him. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I think he's a little delirious still from the... From the... From the contamination, it just it just might humor him if you if you could just. I I don't know why it sometimes this happens. I've seen it with other people before when when the when they're rec recuperating from it. If I have a moment alone with him, yeah, sure. Thank you. Do you wish us to stay here, Wilhelm? For now. That might be best. Okay, just you know where it roughly is, the tent. So just come back when you're ready. Thanks, Raph. You, um... And some gestures towards the open cottage door. Um, and you can enter. The fire is burning in the fireplace. There's the smell of a warm broth. Um, and some rations as you as you enter Drexel uh, is is his wounds have been dressed and uh, his contamination is is he's clearly recuperating um, and he's got a, a bowl of soup in his hand and he starts up from the bed and, and begins to rise and he says I thought you were a ghost been seeing many of those, Elias? Not like you. you Not know, like this. When I first arrived in town, the stories were that um, some of the townsfolk here saw the son of Manfred von Kessel beheaded on the drawbridge, and that his ghost haunts these woods, seeking vengeance. Funny how a local farm boy can see a man stabbed through the eye and turn that into a man getting beheaded. I guess children have creative imaginations, but given what happened, I would have thought you would have been dead for sure. You know... But you're not a ghost, are you? You're very much alive. Elias Drexel, I am alive. And when I heard you were here, I set out with the goal of killing you myself. But now we stand at a bit of an impasse because here I am saving your life. I couldn't let you die like that. It was not what you deserved. Even though you have brought ruin. No, it was what I deserved. You're a noble man, but I've lived with regret ever since that day, and you had every right to leave me to rot there. Every right. I don't expect you to forget or forgive. You can take my life if you want to. Right well, now. Drexel, if I'm going to take your life, it's going to be in a fair fight. I want to best you in combat. Right now you are weak, you are pitiful, and you always kind of have been, but looking at you now, it's sad. It's pathetic. And you are pathetic. What you did to my family, what you brought to my name and my household. I am Wilhelm von Kessel, son of Manfred von Kessel. I watched you kill my father. I fought you on that drawbridge and you stabbed me in the eye and left me for dead. And now here you are, back in my home, standing in the castle, in the very room that you slaughtered my whole family in. Why would you come back here? There's no sense in running from what I am and what I've done. 
You don't need to fight me. Take my life. I give it to you willingly, Wilhelm. I am just a man filled with regrets, and I have died many times since that day. Nothing good came from the choices I made that day. Not a single ounce of good. But you can take my life right here, now, in blood. Or by my life's surface. I would swear to you, because you are the rightful king of Westamar. And that's where we'll end for the night. <laughs> yeah. Y- yep. Well, so you poked your own eye out. I still think that's pretty much what happened. You poked your own eye out, and you're playing with a sword. You're running, more or less, more or less. <laughs> oh my what? gosh! What? <laughs> Surprise! A, a we didn't even know you. this yet. <laughs> <laughs> A massive thank you to our amazing cast, Kelly, Jill, and Joe, for playing. Uh, And a huge thank you to uh, Kyle for all of the wonderful work he does behind the scenes. And uh, also a huge thank you to our Dungeon Master, Monty, for not only running a horror-filled romp through dangerous castle dungeons, but also building up to a moment that I've been anticipating since <laughs> episode one of this campaign. And it was great. And I don't even know where it's going to go. We'll find yeah. out. We'll find out next week. We have one more episode before our little hiatus. Uh, the Kickstarter is still running. Be sure uh, to check it out. Drakenheim.com for season one. Um, uh, based on season one, it's all there on Kickstarter right now. Lots of cool stuff uh, on, on offer. Um, we will be having more streams, more episodes, and all, all that coming through the week. So, as we said before at the top, we will be back next week with more Shadows of Drakenheim. And then we'll be on a short hiatus uh, until mid-August. So, stay tuned for the exact date we'll be coming back uh, because we will be back in person once again. Uh, Joe, I think we got some more people to thank as well. We do. Uh, we uh, we use uh, an in- a variety of incredible assets produced by talented artists and they have graciously given us permission to use them in our stream games but you can use them at your table too and we encourage you to go out and support these amazing creators uh roll 20 with the virtual tabletop the custom maps were made by monty using dungeon draft and wonder draft based on cartography by dyson logos player character artwork by jeremy cole NPC token artwork by Matthias Bourbon, monster token artwork from the D&D 5e Monster Manual and other source books, spell effects tokens by Gabriel Picard, and music by Tabletop Audio. So please check them out and support these amazing creators, including Kelly and Monty. (laughs) Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes t-shirts, including Yes, 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 Way Bigger Than Ducks, uh, and the Dusk Wardens as well. Uh, check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. The videos that we create and our live streams are made possible thanks to the incredible generosity of our Patreon supporters. Uh, we have had an awesome time on our Patreon exclusive Discord community as well, uh, uh, chatting and sharing previews and all sorts of things. Um, we had a cool writer's room re- yesterday where we previewed some of the new spells and magic items in the Dungeons of Drakenheim book. We, our patrons have had some art previews and they get to hang out with us in our Discord server as well. Uh, so you can check that out at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. Yeah, um, you kind of already talked about the phenomenal Discord, but that is exclusive for our patrons. Join us in there and chat with us about the major revelations in Shadows of Drakenheim, as well as just hanging out and chatting about the Kickstarter. There's a lot of hype right now in the Discord, and it is such a wonderful place uh, to be with friends. 
we got also more videos coming on YouTube. This week's video on Thursday is going to drop, which is our how to run faction intrigue in D&D 5e. So we're talking about uh, kind of opening up the hood of how we run the factions in Drakenheim and how all those things work and talking about how you can use some of the principles that we use in Drakenheim for designing your own factions and running your own sort of faction intrigue sort of campaign. So check that out on Thursday. Uh, we just had our episode as well drop on uh, Tuesday for for uh, our uh, cleric subclass tier ranking for Tasha's Cauldron and everything. We got more great content coming out every week on YouTube. So check that out, youtube.com slash dungeon dudes. And be sure to join us live next Tuesday when we record the campaign live on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes on YouTube, and you can also check it out on your favorite podcasting platforms. So make sure to get caught up with all of the Drakenheim goodness. All right. So I think we got uh, we got all that covered there. So with that... Thank you all so much for watching, oh. and we will see you next time in the shadows of Drakenheim.